savollar berib, qanaqadir foydali bir kontent qilishga harakat qilamiz. I believe more than the Telegram it's the word of mouth. You always post questions, real questions from exams. Where do you get these questions from? I guess it was me being lucky with my prediction with my guesswork. People like to point out your mistakes, right? I mean, for me it was just a, it's a, just straight out of a movie, you know? It's like I I thought I'm going back to Uzbekistan being deported, you know? <laughs> Around 500 words and I included four main body paragraphs. And in total six body packages. Yeah? If you are not getting nine and listening, that you are kissing goodbye to nine, you know, basically. And we were in a car. Yeah? We're just celebrating. I'm driving, but he's just, you know, punching me at this point. You know, like that video blew up. It has now half a million views, but there's no shortcut to thinking. Well. Assalamu alaikum. Hoş geldiniz. Podcast'ımızda kuzatucular. Selam assalamu alaikum. Bugün ge podcast'ımız yine bir sonra de koşup turgamızdan kursamız. Bugün ge mehmanlarımız. Berenç mehmanımız Diyarbek Hayat Muradov, Kopili Ailes Instructor, Diyarbek Ailes Okul Merkezine asosçısı ve ikinci tamam dolanı dostları, bergişli diyen kollegaları, Diyarbek sana kolaf. Hoş geldiniz. Podcast'ımızda. Ve bugün şerzat. Bilmem ben savolla verip kana kadar faydalı bir kontent kılışı ki hareket kılamız. Salam aleyküm. Salam aleyküm. Cüdem kub adam soru geldi. Diyor beni of kili ile podcast ki. Diyor beni of kili ile bay bay şi yandırıştı. Kamitar elemi. Timing şuna kadar böyle şekilde. Sizle podcast tüketti izle Türk şuna. Ben bize bu uça çözüldü. Niner ile ben podcast tüketti şimdi bize bilmem. Şu uça konu siz Niner oldu izle. Şimdi ben tabi tabi tabi kliyemiz. Ahmet. Uçsa da ahır. Ha. Hop. Sohbetimizi uzun kopçili soruladı. Barber İngiliz dilde kılış, barber okutucular mı faydalı bıktı iştişkem yani pratik buluşkem İngiliz dilde kılış soruladı. O şengi. Let's try it. Yes. Let's try it in English. Yes. Let's try it in English. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, let's firstly talk about your both of your journey. How you, how, how did you come to the IELTS world? Let's say how did you start learning English at, at the beginning and from where and what actually pushed you to learn English? Well, I guess I was studying in Lyceum back in 2023 and I at the time wanted to go into get into Turin University and Turin required you to have an IELTS certificate. And for me 5.5 would suffice so it would be enough and I approached one of my teachers and and she said it's feasible with your at the time my English was like basic school English. And then I started attending the lessons and I am a big believer in this philosophy. I, I don't think life um, life happens to you. And, you know, I didn't even start out saying that I'm going to eventually be an IELTS instructor, who I am today. Uh, but at the time I pr started preparing for IELTS, my goal was to get the sufficient score to get into Turin. And I prepared for IELTS for like for, for English and then with my teacher, Asura Katoshev. And in 2015, I got my first seven. Oh, and yes, that was your first attempt. IELTS? Yes, yes. And cool. um, it was a, I guess, a big thing for me at the time because uh, it's even seven was not that common at the time. And I then stopped preparing for IELTS because I was like preparing for other subjects. And in 2016, I got my eight. And then I, when I came to Tashkent and when I started studying at Westminster, I started working and in different education centers. And that's how I got, got onto teaching too. Just part-time job, right? Yes, at the time for me, it was like a part-time job to cover my expenses. That's how I saw it. Um, you know, yes, I was, I am by nature an extroverted person. I like talking to people. So, and I was like, it's a, it's a calling for me, you know, I, I like, I like talking to people from all walks of life. It's to use an IELTS phrase. Um, yes, that's that's how it started. All right, cool. Jorabeke, now your turn. Yeah. 
So I can say my journey uh, started accidentally too, yeah, because I mean, we studied in the same lyceum and I was studying math. I was focused on math and physics. I had no idea that I would study English one day. And then just like my friend Deorbik said, life happened just because of happenstance, you know, like, and then my ins initial inspiration was music. Like I used to listen to a lot of English songs, especially Eminem. And, and then I used to listen to those songs and then I was like, I wish I could sing, I, I wish I could sing like Eminem. And then, you know, this is how I started. I just, you know, print the lyrics out. I would learn the words. Um, and still, I didn't want to study English as a subject. I just wanted to enjoy That was just it. your hobby, right? Yeah, just it, learning it was the, just the a hobby music. for me. I just wanted to enjoy my time. And then just, I learned and learned and learned. Just, that's, and then just, I changed my major, let's say. I was studying math and physics, and then I decided, well, Let's choose English. Why didn't you choose the music? Why didn't you like try yourself there? I don't know. There? I just thought that I didn't have what it takes to become a musician back then. Oh. Obviously, <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, you know, as an adolescent, you change your mind a lot, and that's what happened. I was just studying math and physics, like like I said, and then I decided to change my major to English, and. Uh, I wasn't studying IELTS back then too. I was just learning English for fun, let's say. Yeah. And then I got into a pedagogical university back in Hawaii. And then that's how I come into teaching. Um, how did you, how did you uh, come to IELTS? Well, when was your first attempt? What was your score? Um, I was a second year student at university. My journey started much later than the Arabics probably. Um, it was... I was a second year student at university. I was just studying English, but I wasn't focused on IELTS. And then I started working as a teacher yeah, to cover my expenses. And then, you know, I thought that, you know, getting an IELTS, IELTS score would help me teach better, I thought, because, you know, IELTS was not very popular in Naoi. Yeah? And then I thought, well, I can teach IELTS. I was just teaching general English first. And then I thought, well, let's teach IELTS. Let's try IELTS. And then, you know, I started preparing for IELTS, mostly self-studying. And then I attended, like, IELTS courses for, like, two months. Um, we have Bahar Nake, who's my first IELTS teacher, I can say. And then I took the test. It was 2000. I cannot remember exactly, 2017 or 18, I cannot remember exactly. And I ended up with uh, an, a 7 um, um, in my first attempt. And then I kept working and then I started, I stopped teaching general English and then I moved to on, IELTS. Yeah, teaching IELTS. And I taught IELTS for like 10 months before I took my second exam. And in that exam, I got an eight. Nice. Um, and yeah, that's how my journey started. Cool, cool. All right, so how did you come to uh, owning uh, education center? How did you like, Yes. Um, how did you start your business? Um, yeah, I think there is a growing industry in Uzbekistan, like test prep business. I think it's, um, there's a huge market given the rise of private schools as well if you you know private schools are mushrooming all around Tashkent all around Uzbekistan because lots of young people you know um, I, I heard the statistics read it somewhere in Kunuz I believe um, this year for example new school goers there are 700,000 of them but graduates are 300,000 of you know they're like if you discrepancy is like 400,000 so lots of young people they all want to go abroad study and obviously, if you look at any education center, I guess they are packed with people, most of them, I yeah. believe. So it's like, yeah, I think there is a you know, good niche in the market. So like I was thinking, yeah, that's my thing. Because I've been doing this thing, aisle thing for quite a bit now. And I thought like, yeah, well, why don't we do it uh, ourselves? And then that's how we established our... Was it difficult to start in, in, in the beginning? 
to start at the, the business? beginning um i guess i'm one of the what do you call uh, not to sound too braggy uh, ogs when it comes to running a channel <laughs> on telegram you know so yeah, I've we been, will uh, come to your ch yes. telegram channel we have so many <laughs> questions regarding it yes uh, i've been doing this thing for quite a bit i haven't really diversified i'm not on instagram i'm not on youtube on youtube we mostly make um, you know, educational, like me recording on, on the video, that, that, those kinds of videos. But for the most part, my activity mainly on Telegram. And I, I was like, that's enough for me to get started because you need to communicate with people. You need to tell them. It's, I believe more than the Telegram, it's the word of mouth because I have at this point many students who, you know, who I was lucky enough to help. Um, and then they tell their friends and that's, I was like, yeah, I need to, uh, we, we actually we rent a place here uh, near IDP Center, and uh, so far things are going well. Hopefully, we'll, um, we'll we are planning to expand next year. Yes, and yeah, inshallah, yeah, that's a that's a plan. Um, overall, I think I got into this ba business mainly because um, I like talking to people. I, I think I understand exams well. It's not just IELTS, um, but SAT. I did some uh, you know SAT prep too. I help students uh, get into good universities. N not good in a sense. Good for them to you know for them to, to to be happy and to be proud of so that's our thing now yeah we, we are in the test prep business mainly because there's a good niche in right the how did you promote your telegram channel as i've, I've understood the telegram channel uh, helps you to run your business to yes. open your business so in the first place how did you promote your telegram channel how it became so popular in uzbekistan i, I think it's mainly because i there is a part when you're running a social media page it's mostly about giving giving giving and then it's like there's a book by Gary V, like which is like you know, jab jab hook. Basically, you need to give a lot of free content, mm -hmm. and it's, if you pay attention, that's now there are God knows how many channels on Telegram. You know, lots of IELTS instructors, um, and th that's perfectly okay. Um, and I, I think I started putting out nice content, content that's useful. Like actually, some people complain that the kind of content that I put out at the beginning was really useful. Now it's me mostly promoting part, you know promoting my mock test and whatnot. Uh, it's mainly, like, I understand the, uh, understand where they're coming from. But overall, at the beginning, it was nice content, useful materials, and then students started sharing. But I also, on Telegram, because there is no recommendation, like on, for yeah, example, on Instagram, on Instagram YouTube. or YouTube. So you usually uh, collaborate with other, you know, Telegram, uh, you know, channels. And that's how you improve at the beginning. We, you know, we did that, you know, because I don't know, eventually maybe Telegram adds that feature, you know, where I don't know how it works because I can, otherwise it's, and it's ends up being another Instagram. Yeah, it works right? here in Uzbekistan, but it's not so popular. You can, you can have like, you know, ads in, oh, in Telegram, yes. right? Paid tel uh, okay. ads. That's yeah. not popular here yet. So that's, that's how I guess I grew. Now the current size is almost 40K. Yeah, it's yes. one of the biggest channels in IELTS, right? Yes. In Uzbekistan yeah, right yes. now. Okay, I had another question uh, regarding your channel. You you always post questions, real questions from exams. Where do you get these questions from? I mean, sometimes you, you post it after the exams. It's like it's understandable. I mean, like some some students come to you and say like, oh, you know, Jarbek, uh, we had this kind of questions. You just post it. But sometimes we can see the questions just in the middle of the exam. I mean, like, like 3 p.m., 2 p.m. That happened a lot last year as well. Um, I, I guess that it didn't happen in the middle of the exam. Usually it's like my timing is I'm checking certain websites. It's like mostly. Um, so to answer your first question, um, I guess it doesn't take a, you know, genius, genius to, to, to like to search for these passages. It's mostly all over the Internet. Yeah, it's mostly all over the Internet. I'm not like. I don't have any insider anywhere like giving me these tests, like leaking these tests. That that's probably the assumption some people have. No, it's not. IELTS is very confidential exam. You cannot do that. Um, it's just me doing good, you know, googling. I, I guess I'm really good at googling, so that's how I find. Um, and some of the other, you know, instances you mentioned. I guess it was me being lucky with my prediction with my guesswork. Oh, it's just it's that. All right. Nothing else. Um, and I on, like only do that to promote. To promote my mock test, I do believe that uh, you know uh, my my mock tests, our mock tests are the best 
Whoa. Um, in, All right. in the country. How is it going? Um, it's going great. Lots of people are happy because there are candidates coming out of their exam and telling that we got the exact same score down to each section. Mm -hmm. um, this is happening. I usually don't post when they get overall same score because that happens with most candidates because of the exam nerves and whatnot. But most people, not most people, two or three candidates after each exam, they say, I got the same score down to each section. Um, so that goes to tell how good our mock tests, are, you know, just plugging in my, <laughs> you know, my thing. Into the yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's our thing. That's one of the services we offer. You know, people who are watching can, can, you know, come and take the test with us. All right. All right. What about you? What, what about your Telegram channel? We, we've seen like we have I also mean, so many. Yeah. I mean, recently it stopped growing. <laughs> Why? Mainly because I stopped sharing. Whoa. Um, so at the beginning it just grew like, How many, how many followers you have right now? Uh, around 20k. 20k, okay. Yeah. Even if we don't have so many followers <laughs> in ITC. So, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I had like 1,000 subscribers at the beginning because... How did you start it? I mean, just like every IELTS instructor, I thought that I should have a channel for myself, yeah. Uh, but then just idea popped up. Uh, it was mainly the Arbic's idea. Um, he told me that I should share speaking sample answers, yeah, answering the recent questions. Um, and then I said, I said, okay, let's do that. Um, and then I started sharing my sample answers because, you know, back then I used to get like eight all the time in my speaking. Um, and then I started sharing nice sample answers, like, I don't know, probably 200, maybe more. I don't know the exact number. So then I kept sharing and sharing. People kept sharing those sample answers, sending those sample answers to their friends. And then my channel started growing. Like in like two months, I grew from a thousand to like 10,000, like in, in two months. Yeah. Of course, I collaborated with other IELTS channels as well, the other bigs. And I was working with uh, Big Zod Marahmed back then. Uh, he somewhat helped me to grow my channel as well. So, um, <clears throat> and then, yeah, I kept doing the same thing. Uh, I worked on my speaking, I tried, and I also at the same time tried to help other candidates improve their uh, speaking. Because if you look at some of the speaking questions, you cannot even answer those questions in your native language. Uh, they're strange, very, very strange, right? Uh, so, I saw a niche, uh, like there's a market for it. Um, and then, Yeah, I started helping students and then just, yeah, that's how my channel grew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also you got your first night on speaking, I think in 2021, right? Yes, yeah. it was actually after I started my channel, like uh, I started preparing for the uh, speaking sample answers. Uh, and I thought it was the missing piece. Like I was, uh, you know, getting eight, that wasn't a problem. But then after I started posting my sample answers, you know, to avoid criticism, yeah, I had to work on my speaking as well. Because, you know, people like to point out your mistakes, right? I mean, <laughs> I do that, yeah. Especially in Uzbekistan, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I started working and then my speaking improved a lot. And then I got my first nine in speaking. So you were one of the first, like, persons who got nine on speaking? Yeah. Or like, I, uh, what was it like, may, were there many nines in speaking those times? I don't think nine in speaking was that I know that the, one of the first one, then? like Barna Mukimo, right? We know her like one of the first speaking niners. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't no. know exactly like about the names who got like first nine on speaking or... Yes, uh, yeah. but, but 2021 and nine in speaking, it was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah that, was, that cool. was not very common. Yes, people, several people got it, but it was not. When did you get your first 8.5? Uh, it was in the same year, yeah. In 2021. When I got my first nine in uh, speaking, I got my first overall 8.5 too. What did you stop, like, you know, aiming for nine? What did you stop, like, I thought, focusing? Uh, it was enough for me, yeah, like, to, I mean, 8.5 was a cool score. Yeah, like, it was great <laughs> it is, back actually. then. Um, so I thought, yeah, I mean, What about that's now? okay, that's all right, like, 
Now, I mean, you know, <laughs> how many uh, Niners we been, have right now? Five, been, six, six, six yeah, Niners yeah. we have. Yeah. yeah, it's been like two years. Yeah, um, and I was working in Naoi. I just recently, you know, moved to Tashkent, and I wasn't even thinking about taking the test again. Yeah, because I I didn't have to, right? So I because eight point five was like, you know the top nine, toughest mark nine in speaking, and then I came back. I decided to come back to Tashkent, and then I started working with the Arabic, and I had like a week. I had nothing to do, so I said, "Why not take the test? Why not update my score?" Yeah, because it had been for like two years since I last took the exam, right? Um, and then I took it, and then I. Uh, ended up with 8.5 again, but this time, writing was 8.5. Oh, um, you're close. Yes. What uh, was your like the uh, marks or the subscores? Double nine in listening and reading, okay. 8.5, and eight in speaking. Um, okay, you were like, z- z- like zero inches five, away from yeah, yeah overall <laughs> zero point yeah. five away and from nine. The thing is, I wasn't hoping to get a nine. Um, I was just trying to update my score mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, it had been, like I said, two years yeah, since I last took the exam. I wasn't aiming for a nine. And then just after 8.5 in writing happened, I You're thought, like, wow, I'm, I mean, okay. I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not that difficult. It's not as difficult as yeah, I yeah. thought before. Right. And then. Yeah, I mean, I took, I ended up taking the test. I don't know. I mean, times after that, three times probably. Three right? times. I, right. Like every time was just like zero point five. Yeah, zero point five away from an overall. Oh, inshallah, inshallah, maybe, yeah, maybe very soon, maybe. very soon, <laughs> very soon. Yeah, yeah, we'll be happy to have you. Like yeah. you know, like <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> maybe we'll have like like ten people Niners Club uh, podcast soon. Okay. okay. Right. What What about you? What was your like journey to nine? How many times you have taken the test? Actually, when you started like aiming for nine. Well, I was, I actually, you know, in the US and uh, at the time I took the test in San Francisco. I guess some people would call it lame. I I would call it lame too, you know, to be in the US and to be taking the IELTS again. (laughs) Um, So that's what I did because I was, um, I was a student and as a student, you also, you know, have to cover your expenses and I was doing delivery, you know, I was delivering food, doing Uber Eats, uh, doing DoorDash and those kinds of things. And I was like, there is a cool place every time I delivered food to this place called um, Marina Market like in San Francisco. It's a very cool place, very beautiful place. And I thought if I update my score and I get a nine and I want to start YouTube there. Um, so my plan was to and then probably eventually just go full time into a YouTube thing. And but my stay there wasn't too long. I I, I, I wanted to come back and then just um, and because I needed a change of scenery. Like I actually went to the United States. It was a you know goal I was working on. Did uh, you go there for a master's degree? No, for my bachelor's degree. For yes, um, as a, an F one student um, visa holder, and then I went there. And I dropped out from university because I was like, okay, timing is wrong. I'm, maybe it's like some, some other time, you know. Um, and then I took the test. Uh, it was just a solid 8.5. And I was like, you know, I came back to Uzbekistan. I started teaching, renting my f- uh, friend's place in Ganga. And then I was like, maybe I took take the test, you know, like because I was like, I can get a 9. You know, it's 2022 August. Um, and then I registered for two exams back to back with IDP and with BC. Uh, with IDP, I got my first nine in speaking and with BC, I was just half a half a band, you know, shy of an overall nine. And that's, and I was like, I was like this close and I didn't again say, you know, I'm not taking the test again. I didn't take the test because I, I guess I'm gonna have to, you know, drop one of those bombshells uh, and say like, I think the number of tests I have taken um, has grown in the last and this year. Like before, I wasn't taking this many tests. After, I guess it kind of got into this race thing. Everybody was like, I'm going to be, you know. And, and I am sure that as examiner, like there are teachers who took the test way, way, like many times. Um, like I'm not really proud of because there are people that I talk to and I tell them, Oh, I am such a, I, why am I doing that? I, because it's, for me, exam is a really stressful thing. 
you know it's like especially uh it's better if, for me if i'm taking the test uh you know i don't like the experience honestly it's like you uh being tested you're being tested you're surprised yeah, like all of those people, things yeah, because like you're taking the test for experience. other people uh, you are essentially taking the test for other people. Like, let it be for the university, let it be for your job. You are essentially taking the test to prove your worth, you know, uh, so to speak. And I, I don't like the experience. My goal was to get a nine. My goal was to get a nine. Why would I take? Why would I spend that much money, right? You know, uh, obviously with you guys, we have the partnership thing, and I was taking the IDP test uh, for free, which is nice, you know. But I, I imagine like. I guess most of the people who are taking so many tests are doing, you know, the same way. But overall, um, yeah, I, I don't think, I'm, you know, I was taking it just to experience how where the tests have changed. It. <laughs> I, I was taking a test uh, to see, you know, to, if I can get an overall nine. And I, you know, what what happened? Timing was this way. I, I ended up scoring twice. Twice. Like, twice. It, was it the same day? No, I actually registered in August three exams back to back, like twenty two. Uh, 22nd of August, 24th of August, 27th of okay. August with you guys. No, I mean, I mean I, I, like I mean like the 9th. They did they just come came out, out like the same day or no, like two, two, days. two days apart two like days. yes, yes, yeah, two days. Like I first, you know, BC result came out and then IDP came out. I was like, okay, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually oh, having, yeah, no bad, you know. Um so yeah, that's what we happened. We were actually together when he, you know, read the BC result. And we I were going to Osh Center, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so we were on our way to, like, we go to the same Osh Center all the time, and we were like, and we, I wasn't even expecting, you know? It's like, just to, be, you guys also moving to this new system, right? BC is, yeah. like, has launched yeah. this in Sparrow, like, something like that. So basically, they don't send you, I don't know how, the, you know, they... Yeah, fun. the email comes just automatically. Oh, automatically, the yes. The results are here. Yeah, that's what happened. I, was, it was, I wasn't expecting, it was 6 p.m. or 5 p.m., I don't know. And email like notifications because i regularly check my emails and <laughs> and made and, some uh, up <laughs> before opening that message and we were in the car yeah, we're just celebrating i'm driving but he's just you know punching me at this point you know like <laughs> i'm in the car i'm trying to focus on the you know traffic light and everything yeah it was just how, you know how, how, the how your life, cha life changed after you got nine the, the, that was like a stress release i mean like i i guess i'm i i dopamine hit you get from that was, was nice at, you know it lasted for like 10 minutes or 15 mm. minutes or an hour probably at most but they after that it. but the second result wasn't that you know honestly that that impressive anymore <laughs> yeah. you know uh, the first one was great um but i i lift in the gym but when i you know break my pr that's actually usually in a better source of dopamine. <laughs> so you know what I mean? It's like sometimes when I'm bench pressing, if I'm bench pressing heavier weight than I did previously, that gives me uh, more dopamine. I realized it's like now, uh, maybe that's narcissism or whatever, but when I look in the mirror, if I look better, um, and like if I'm lifting heavier weights and then overall, I feel like that my health is better and I'm, I have more energy. Uh, that gives me more, you know, more, you know, satisfaction. satisfaction yes, right. you yeah, know, but that's a nice feeling, honestly, because you've been aiming for it for for the past year or so, right? Well, anyways, it's a good yes, marketing yes. tool for your. Yes, it's it was it was it really helped, honestly. Um, I think we've seen a noticeable increase in the number of because that goes to show you know how the test works. Yeah, and you know, like especially if you look at the sub scores, and then you will be like the students will be like this teacher knows what he is doing. Yeah, uh, right. So because he you know he or she has got the top mark in the aisles, and yeah, that's from that point of view, it's been helpful. Yeah, actually, I've got a question here. Like you said that you, you didn't stay in the U.S. for a long time. Yes. Why actually you came back to Uzbekistan and started your? I mean, like so many Uzbek people are aiming yeah, for yeah, U.S. Like, I'm like, especially like Uzbek people, like who want to go to the whoever U.S. Whoever goes to U.S., like, they stay they, in they U.S. They don't want to come back. Yeah. Yeah, my friend told me last year from University of Law. I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to disclose these numbers, whatever. Uh, but 20 students went to the U.S. Only t two came back. You know, like these students are like trying to stay in, in the U.S. Um, and so many people I know of uh, also uh, trying to do the same. They go to the U.S. and stay. But for me, I even drove a truck. Can you imagine? Like I literally signed up for truck school um, and I was I drove a truck for two days and 
I didn't like the experience because when you're practicing at a track school, you're driving a short one. You know, it's like, I don't know, 50, 25 foot or something like that. Um, uh, but the, when you're actually driving the like actual one, it's like 20, 20, 52 feet, yeah, 52 feet. That's a really long thing. And in the US, um, because you have to make money, right? I started, I never, you know, in Uzbekistan did I drive a car. I never drove a car here in Uzbekistan. For the first time, I, my, my friends were teaching me, you know. My friends were teaching me, that's how you drive a car. But I got the driving uh, driver's license in like 10 days. I learned with my tra friends taught me, but you need to also, um, then, then I took lessons with, from a Chinese lady. And then I got my driver's license and I started delivering food. And while doing so in, a, in this street, uh, there was a like busy street, I went there. I ended up hitting a man Whoa. Oh, like in my car. It was a gentle touch, but still it was a scene. It's a very you know, great story to tell everyone. I, I usually tell this. Uh, what happened, I hit this man, and he, he was one of those men like, who wants to make money from oh, insurance right. companies. He immediately gets up, he opens my car store, and starts shouting, swearing. And I'm just... I'm not able to process what's what's happened just now. And and then there was a lady coming, you know, in a very expensive car and she saw what happened. It, I just made a U-turn, illegal U-turn, but the guy will, was also jaywalking. The man was in his 50s. And I hit the man and then he immediately called the police. It, and when you call 911, it turns out in the US, uh, all three come, come at the same time. Whoa. Police, uh, medical, medical, and, and then fireman. firefighters. All three came. For me, it was just a, it's a, just straight out of a movie. You know, it's like I, I thought I, I'm going back to Uzbekistan, being deported. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you know my, my visit to the U.S. was very short lived. That's what I thought. Um, and then I called my friends. And my, I called my friend uh, Azam, and he, he's been living in the U.S. for for a long time now. And and he, by the time they they're coming, they, a lot of things are happening. The medics came. And they are trying to talk the guy down, like, but he wouldn't understand. He says, it's worse than BLM. It's just racism. Just He just wants to make money. I don't- He was then, black? Uh, yeah, like, no, he was Jewish. Uh, he he was said, Jewish. it's right. anti-Semitism, whatever. Like, he's just making up things. And then a woman was such a helpful lady. I guess, you know, she, she was just an angel at the time for me. You know, she just stopped with, she, she had a dinner to go to. And, and she said, I'm, you know, I am in a hurry. But she, when the medics came, she explained that this young man was making an illegal U-turn, but this old man also was, you know, jaywalking, jaywalking yeah. too. But it wasn't anything too bad, you know. It was just a, ten, a gentle uh, hit. But when the car, which is three tons, you know, I guess, right, it's even a gentle <laughs> yeah. hit probably, you know, hurts you, I understand. Uh, but, and then this lady said, if this goes to the court i'm going to be you know the witness yeah. and i'm going to tell that what what's going to happen and you know, he she came up to me and told me like don't worry i think things will be fine and she left and then she left her uh, driver's license i am thankful to her um and then the the police came they they saw that i didn't have my you know insurance or whatnot and overall it was just a headache they took the uh, plate number and everything and then one thing led to another this guy who was jewish just left the scene um, before the police came because oh. yes because he took a video and whatever and then police said we cannot do it because he left the you know the scene where this accident happened and but i didn't hear but i was waiting for the police to call me but that didn't happen but that was a really big thing for me during this really at stressful, the same right? time it yeah. was like a first week of your staying in the u.s like yes it, it wasn't first week it was month two or something like that but it was my first week of driving mm -hmm. um you know independently and then i at, at around the same time i started driving school like truck school and when i'm in a truck it's a very big thing i, I thought what if i get into another accident, you know, right. accident and the casualties will be high, you know, like, it's like you, my friends are trying to convince me, no, no, no, Durbik, there's lots of money in it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't about worry. It. <laughs> man, like, you're gonna do it, like, Everyone's you know, like, like, like, you know coward, I right? know men who were just driving it, like, riding a bicycle, and they ended up going to track, you just drove, you know, car for a bit, and, like, you can do it. But I didn't like the experience, and I said, I'm gonna do YouTube thing. And, and then I, I and that's why I took the test in San Francisco and I was actually planning uh, to go back to 
you know, San Francisco again and to do YouTube thing, mainly YouTube thing, because people are here fascinated by anyone who's in the U.S. Yeah. I thought the channel would just take off easily, you know, especially my it friend. Would, it would. It you, would. You already have so many followers. Yes, something like, this. like that would be uh, very Instagram, easy. Instagram, I believe it, it was easy to grow. My friends, for example, they grew their channel to 60K in one month. Cool. Yes, like with, with paid ads. No, or no, just just, just you know, good content. They are just doing it differently. They've got really cool cameras and everything. Um, now, yeah, I think they are in the U.S. because when you are in the U.S., it sells. I believe it sells. Like people will be like, "Oh, they are in the U.S." You know. And I was planning to do that, but when I came back, I said, "No." Um, my mom was like, "No, probably it's better for you to stay in here. Uh, maybe YouTube thing. What if you know? What if you go back to the U.S.?" When, when you are settled and everything, you know, after the family thing. Um, and then I, I decided to stay and then open the education center. And then, you know, once I opened the education center, I was like, okay, why don't I get an I and 1600 in SAT and IELTS, you know, that's, that's what the thing. Plus they didn't have OSH, you know. They didn't have America. OSH, mainly, yes. <laughs> uh, food was the main thing, you know. I guess most people, when, when they talk about Uzbekistan, they mainly talk about Uzbekistan positively in terms of food. You know, we have the best food uh, in the world, probably. No, no questions, <laughs> no doubt. So that's why I ended up coming back to Tashkent. Yeah, and how about you? How, how, y why you decided to come back to Tashkent again and to I start mean, working with? I mean, I was in Naoi and I was working well, quite well. Yeah, that's. I right. had my education center there, and things were going well. And then I was kind of bored, let's say, and. I decided to, you know, come back and challenge myself, let's say, yeah. So, yeah, that's the main motivation. I didn't have any reason to be in Tashkent, but I decided to come back because I wanted new experience, let's say. So that's... Are you aiming for, like, U.S., Europe, no. for a little, just... I have never been interested in... I mean, yeah, I was back when I was at Lyceum. I tried to apply for universities abroad, but then I changed my mind. I thought, I mean, I will... Settle, settle in and start a family and you know stay here yeah okay uh let's now talk about your like both of yours exam experience and share some experience you have like preparing uh, like yeah, pre all, yeah preparing and also like uh dealing with the stress during the test especially when there's a time limit for like the test like reading and writing and what's what, what's your like main problem when you take the test for of course like it depends on the level of the test but uh do, do you have some like weak point or something like uh, you <laughs> weak point i mean writing is the biggest problem for almost everybody i guess um that's what i think about like for me listening is a little bit of a problem because i always skip this you know uh spelling tests yeah i cannot do that i don't know why and then reading is not a problem um but my last exam was it was terrible in terms of reading because i couldn't even understand like at least three questions yeah so and then writing timing is important like uh in recent years what we have come to understand is that you need to finish as quickly as possible and spend as much time as you can on you know editing your essay um so that's what i tried to work on before i you know started taking the test i used to write every day and i post those essays on my channel as well you can see that probably yeah and i used to write every day at least two essays two three sometimes i wrote like i don't know seven essays a day um uh just when i came to tashkent i i said i had nothing to do i had you know all day to prepare for the exam so i kept writing and writing and writing and that's actually what helped me to get my first 8.5 in writing because you know when i wrote uh this time i experimented with new things uh, i tried to do things that i didn't do before Um, and one of the things I did was to just, you know, get rid of the old approach, like when you write introduction, first body and the second body and the conclusion, I just decided to, you know, get rid of the, get rid of the approach and try to include more paragraphs in my, uh, task two. Like uh, what? I, I There was like introduction then? Three then or, like three or four? four, at least four paragraphs. Four paragraphs. Yeah. Sometimes 
even five. more. Whoa. Yeah, sometimes and six. it works. Yeah, it, it, it, it, it, it works. works. Yes. I mean, this is what I did when I got my first exam. I wrote like, I don't know, around 500 words. And I included four main body paragraphs and in total six body paragraphs. Yeah. So when I prepared for the exam, that's what I did. Yeah, like I tried to experiment with new things and it worked. Um, so what's your advice to students? So uh, for those, I mean, I can divide my advice into two separate parts, right? So first, for those who are aiming for just 6.57. Um, so the old approach works. Um, so focus on making as few mistakes as you can. Yeah, avoid, I mean, try to improve your grammar. So I, what I've noticed that in, in my students, when they have a very good grammar, it's easy to get a seven. Um, uh, but if you are aiming for higher than seven, seven point five, let's say if you want to get eight, eight point five in writing, you need to do, you need to try new things. Yeah, you need to show that you are different yeah, in terms of your language, as well as your approach. Probably, yeah, that's what I believe is the key yeah, to getting a higher score. What about the speaking? Speaking, I mean, for speaking. Um, I've seen like so many uh, education centers make their students to learn so many collocations. Does it work? Making students learn words in general, I don't think it, it's going to, you know, work. Um, I mean, like using collocations during the... Uh, I mean, yes, using is all right, but being able to use those is another question, right? So my approach is um, that you need to expose yourself to natural English, watch movies, listen to music, so do English stuff yeah, in general. Mm. And then you try to uh, produce the same thing by imitating. Um, I always believe this. I mean, th this is a simple thing. Um, before you start producing things, um, uh, I always use this analogy. Uh, I always give this analogy to my students. Imagine you have a bag, yeah, like huge bag. Um, and to be able to get things easily from that bag, yeah, you need to fill it first. You've got to fill uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine a huge bag. Yeah, or how, well. How, how did you fill it with? Uh, like, I mean, you, you need to expose yourself. You need to learn. Yeah, what, what did you watch? What, what, what kind uh, of channels anything, did you advise? Anything in English. Anything in which a native speaker speak English works. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be a sitcom. Yeah. Some people have like short attention span. Uh, they cannot watch movies like for a long time, yeah, especially these days. But it helps. I did that. Diori probably did that. And whatever you're interested in, you need to do it in English. For example, I was interested in music. Uh, I started listening to English songs and translating them. And I learned so many words and grammar along the way. So if you're interested in art, just watch art content in English. And if you're interested in technology, just watch technology in English. So that's how it's going to work. Um, so you need to, you know, treat this process as a hobby. You need to learn and enjoy at the same time. Um, some people just focus on the learning part a little, little bit too much, and they kind of forget about the, you know, enjoying part, and they easily end up getting bored, and they start to you know uh, look for ways shortcuts let's say um, which in english in terms of english do not always work so uh you need to you know enjoy the process yeah learning process learn about new things and english just improves naturally oh, yeah. thank you. That that's was, that was my approach yeah cool so, advices thank you yeah. very much Thank you. Did, did you. did you also like talk every day in English? Yes. Like like yes. the whole uh, day. Even though I didn't talk, uh, I watched. I consumed English content like a lot. I mean that's true for everybody who's whose English is good. Yeah. Just ask anyone. Like, how did you improve your English? I mean, they say the same thing. Yeah, they mm. consumed but a lot. Personally, I've thought that um, the better practice is talking rather than listening, but then maybe... Uh, yes, I mean, like I said, you know, um, you when, you, when your bag is empty or in, in inside your bag there's 
only few things, it's difficult to get those things from the bag. Yeah? You need to fill those, uh, fill the bag, and then you can get the things easily from that bag. Yeah? So filling process takes a lot of time and effort and dedication and, of course, consistency. Um, so after that, you can you naturally start, you know, producing English. Yeah? That just that just what happened to me at least, and I believe this is true for other people as well. All right, Dorbeck, what was your approach? What was like uh, your approaches to getting nine in all the segments? Like, what are your like life hacks for? I would say like formula, like, like secrets, uh, secrets uh, yeah, for segments. Well, I guess it was um, either, you know. My first nine could have been in back in 2022, in August. It was s- right speaking that got in the way, like it's got like half a band. Then two times it was three times where I was listening. I was you know, you know <laughs> screwing up and how listening. Come, how come? Like I, I would say like listening and reading. I was like yes, for teachers the, should be like. But I would part. normally get nine, but somehow I got into this. You know, um, there was a downgrade in my listening score simply because. Like I said earlier, for me, it's a very stressful exam because um, stressful in a sense, because if you especially the listening is the very first test you're going to do, right, you will be like, if I miss answers because the the thought is there, you'll be like, uh, that's not a nine because if you're oh, not getting like, I've uh, missed. yes, so if you're you not getting nine years. and listening, <laughs> that you're kissing goodbye to nine, you know, basically. Um, and then I guess that took it took its toll, like because I was thinking if I miss and I in one of the exams, I misread the instructions. You know, candidates who are test takers who are watching, make sure that you read the instructions carefully. There were a list of like stores, and the you know it was a class like, matching question. I was like, read. I read it as if it was uh, something that they are good at. These online stores good at, for example, Uzum, Olchu, is whatever, and something they are good at: good delivery, good description, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's it's it turns out it's actually something that should improve. Oh, uh, there were five questions, and I completely misread the thing. And then yeah, it was eight for you know for listening at the time. And it, it was like nine. Like there are two ways you can get nine, right? Nine nine or eight point five, eight point five or nine nine eight nine. Um, you know, I was getting eight and nine in in writing and speaking. <laughs> two times I was you know you know screwing up in yeah. listening, and it was mainly my concentration. Then in the exam, I started doing something weird in my last two exams. I was literally holding the screen, you know that de- you know. Highlighting <laughs> <laughs> so like yes, yeah, yeah, nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My fence. Because you cannot do that. I'm like I'm using my you know index finger like my I guess thumb you know just Scroll. you know doing that. Otherwise I was it worked. It oh. it actually worked, however strange it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we will just put your screen like yeah. you know, like just, just like. Yeah, table. I was like it's to make it easier for students, you know. It uh, like for me, reading is usually. I'm trying to finish reading in like 40 minutes, in which I usually end up, you know, succeeding in doing, uh, because in the remaining 20 minutes, I'm just trying to go over all the questions, and uh, I always tell students try to aim to finish passage one in like eight to 10 minutes, which is feasible. Passage one is usually, everything is in order, like you, you usually find it. And then um, whether passage is difficult or not depends on the, the kind of topic you have. If it's an abstract topic that you normally get, um, you know, get to read, um, I, I believe that makes a passage difficult. Most of the time I'm approaching the, t- the passages, or I want to learn about it today, you know? The mindset is like, so if it's about some insect, why don't I learn about those insects today, you know? So you, you generally need to get interested in the topic. Uh, for writing, I think uh, everything has been said, probably, pretty much. But main thing was I was probably routinely getting eight, uh, like in writing at the time. And f- what helped me to get 8.5 for those who are, you know, I, I guess some IELTS instructors are going to watch too. I think if you are really aiming to go from 8 to 8.5 in writing, two things mainly, um, editing is the main thing. So again, my, I'm going into the exam with the goal of finishing both tasks in 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. So I want not just task two, I want to finish both tasks in 40 minutes, task one and task two. And then, and then in dedicated the, 20 minutes? In the 20 editing. minutes, you you know edit thoroughly. Uh, that's like 
I was kind of successful in doing it in both exams, so 13 and 15 minutes left. What about uh, the structure? Do you also use the same structure as Jurobex? Like uh, yes, in in for writing tasks, so you need to break away from the usual template. You know, four paragraph structure. I, I, at higher bands, I you believe in both the exams, it, yeah. Yeah, you should like. I wrote almost 600 words in both exams in tasks. 600. Yeah, almost. So and yours was 500, right? Yes. So that means like the more you write, the better you get. No, I mean, but, but like, like you need for, for, to be for, careful yeah. about giving this advice <laughs> yeah. to students. Yeah, that's I why mean, I decided to. Right, you know, this advice is for teachers who are aiming yes. for eight point five in writing, not for students who are want to get like six point five. Yes, to be able to fully explain, that's what you gotta do. You know, it's like um, you have to explain everything. You know, you know, in a very detailed way. What about so, the task one? How task many words? Task one. Task one, I usually write 300 or, you know, 250 words too. You know, lots of words too for task one. Same for you? Uh, so cool. it's like... So, like, I mean, like, you're really good type, t typing like masters, right? I mean, you we like type on a daily basis. And it's not a problem. Um, but you need to, you know, bear in mind the fact that it's not possible when it comes to paper-based exam. What was your sc score on paper? Like your writing score, seven point five. The maximum you got that was seven point five. It was back in when the CDA CDI exam was launched or rolled out. I never took the paper, oh, never. Yeah. yeah. Um, because computer IELTS is a lot, a lot, a lot easier, I believe. Not in terms of the questions level; they are the same. <laughs> Levels are the same. Students, you know, should not be like. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we will take um, a CDI yeah, because yes. they're quite easier. In terms of convenience like you for me reading is because i'm doing video walkthroughs on youtube it's a lot easier for me to do that like i guess that's why how i got to the point where i'm finishing all three passages in 40 minutes because i do a lot of video walkthroughs for my students like explain them and f when it comes to typing there are so many websites 10 fingers.com or something like that. there are so many websites you can just google them um i guess there are youtubers who teach you how to get better at typing typing is really important um so you are if you get your typing speed at, to a decent level, it is feasible to finish both tasks in 40 minutes. Yeah. And it's all about editing, leaving the examiner no room, no chance, but to give you an eye. What about the generation of ideas? How do um, these ideas come? Ex that's a good question. I believe you become a better writer when you're a better thinker. Uh, you need to, first of all, become a clear thinker. Like You need to th be able to think well, but there's no shortcut to thinking well. You know, it's just years of exposure to read literature, to videos that talk about social issues, because in the them there are so many social trends. So in my IDP exam that I got, got 8.5 for, I had a climate change, um, you know, whether we should accept the climate change and live with the effects of it, or should we continue fighting against climate change? And, and I took the contrarian approach, and I said, no, we should start living with it, li living with the effects of it, because it's too late. Uh, we, you know, and then I read this article from The Economist, and, and there was lo lots of n cool ideas about how much investment has to be increased and all of those things. And I, I have a friend who is also Ben Niner, but not from Uzbekistan, but she believes, she's a firm believer that luck doesn't exist. Like, she believes in this famous quote, Louis Pastor or someone, like, luck, um, like something about preparation and like how it meets opportunity or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is it? Like favors the prepared mind. Like favors the prepared mind. And like I was attributing it to like, like, but she says, no, no, no, you were prepared. Like you were prepared, you put in the preparation, but I do nothing in, in the way of preparation. Like, you know, it's not to make it impressive. I, I don't write essays. I don't write reports. I write in the exam. I have no collection of my essays. Really? Uh, yes. I'm, this year, I might have written like 10 at most, 10 reports and essays combined together because um, I read a lot. I get that compensates for my not like writing. I literally don't write uh, at all because it's a boring thing. All right. Should the ideas in your writing should be like be original, like not like the typical one from or like it's fine as well. I mean, how to say, I mean, like the the your ideas that you are writing in your writing should they be like yes I believe outstanding yes. unique Unusual out of from um like I believe um, well considering IELTS is just a language test it's not ideas test it's not testing if you are like original thinker but there is lots of subjectivity involved you know your examiner is a person 
uh, who's got their worldviews, although they are trained to remain as objective as possible. So if you write all the cliche banal ideas, I believe, you know, um, but if you ex express them well with good language, they're giving your score, whatever the score you deserve, but it adds to the authenticity if you are writing good ideas. Like my- Just like, impress, right? Yes, like my, my response to that was contrarian approach. Like I said, no, we should, most candidates will be like, no, I'm gonna say, you know, countries should, should still fight against climate change. But I was like, no, we should start living with it. And I gave two arguments. In my BC exam, when I got 8.5, the topic was why people are deciding to have children at a later age. And again, I watched lots of social commentary, liberal, you know, essay videos. And it's like most people in England, for example, not having children because childcare is really expensive. It turns out they spend 70% of their income. I was giving, so for one piece of advice for students is try to give factual examples. Not that personal examples don't work, but you need to have a specific example in each paragraph. That's a must. You need to have, because that's the, the, the task, write at least 250 yeah, words yeah. and give reasons for your answer and include examples from your knowledge or experience without an example you're not getting a good score for task response yeah you to, because you need to explain fully like, yes you know, like definitely you have question. to have clear pertinent examples in each paragraph should it be like just example or like you know like i had something like this that's or okay you, too. or it should be like you know according to the recent survey by world uh, by Health the way like you are asking where do i come up with ideas i think the best way to come up with ideas is look at yourself Think of personal, like how is your personal response to the, the to the question, and is it possible to go big and overgeneralize it? Like you think whatever the question is, uh, like for example, in one of the exams there was about. Um, I'm sorry if I'm talking, you know, too much about. No, no, this, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're used to it. <laughs> we, we are here for talking. <laughs> you know, I'm like um, because it's like you need to. Think how this is affecting the question at hand, whatever the topic is, how that's affecting you. What's your personal response to that? Is it p possible to go big and generalize it? And then that's the easiest way to think about this. I'm always thinking how that affects me, whatever the question is. Am I going to have children at a later age? I'm asking literally. Yeah. And I will be, what are my reasons for having children at a later age? And my argument will be like, yeah, I want to achieve good financial independence. And then, then I could be like, Generalizing most people are having you know, children at a later age because they want to achieve financial independence first and they want to be invested in their children's upbringing. So the, the easiest way to think of ideas, because you don't want to write too many personal ideas too, you start from your personal you know, response to that personal you know, anecdotal you know, experience and then you go big. Because you need to, in the IELTS exam, that's how it works, you, you need to go this. But the idea thinking is backwards. You start from yourself, then go big. But when you're writing body paragraph, you go this. You start with something general and then yeah. go specific. Yeah. So I think one takeaway from for, for from this uh, podcast episode for students could be like uh, this idea generation. This is usually I teach my students, and I think it's, it really works like a charm. All right. What about you? How do you generate your ideas? I mean, I do the same thing. Um, for example, in my last exam, uh, the question was why do old people ignore doctor's recommendation regarding uh, physical exercise? And I just think, like, in Uzbekistan, not many old people do exercise. Why? Because older people are expected to spend their retirement in a conventional way, like taking care of grandchildren, uh, hanging out with friends in a bar or something. And I said... Yes, that's you know, that's the reason. Yeah, that's the reason why uh, old people around the world don't do a physical exercise. Yeah, and I said, well, social norms, um, and I just come up with the general idea. Yeah, so old people do not do exercise because there are you know highly embedded social norms in many cultures. And then, uh, like the big said, I just work my way through a personal example, and I literally talk about. Uzbekistan yeah, like for example in my country Uzbekistan people are expected to do this and that in their you know older ages and people who are who approach to their retirement in a rather unconventional way they are criticized by family members friends and relatives and so I just did the same thing right so we have also seen you uh, on YouTube channels of other people yes uh, like 
uh, what was his name? Foreign Eli Eli Eli, Eli, yes. Eli yeah, and yeah, yeah. another one. Like. The question is Chief. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the question is, do you this do this for like promotion stuff or is it for practical? Yeah, mainly yeah. for promotion uh, reasons. Like, I promoted Eli's course. Um, you know, on my channel, I got the like you know affiliate marketing yeah, yeah, yeah. so basically he he pays for me oh uh, yes nice. yes so every time a student purchases a course from him from, gets from your link yes, yes from my link and i get money for it um yeah we but I, is it help, helpful i mean like uh, we've seen like several niners uh going to this kind of uh mock speaking tests is it helpful during the exam or no, I didn't do it in the way of preparing for my exam. I mainly did it to to promote my YouTube channel, and to actually what happened after I did this YouTube video. I was like some of the people that I work out with in the gym were like, "You are an IELTS instructor. You got a nine. <laughs> like, <laughs> so they have watched that yeah, video. Yes, because everyone watching that video blew up. It has now half a million views. Back then, I didn't even, you know, get a nine. I, I didn't have a nine. But, like, this guy would, like, because they don't have it. That was, like, the title, like, Speaking Uzbe Nine. Uzbe yeah, yeah, yeah. Uzbek Nine. Like, and yeah. they, they got, you got a nine? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and, yes, and I, I had to explain, no, that's not an overall. I got nine for speaking section. That's we did a video. But they were, like, even gym people that I, you know, shared the gym with, they also ended up watching. So it was, you know, funny that how it's all algorithm worked and then everyone ended up watching. I did the same video with Keith. With Keith, it's now probably 300K or something like that. Yeah, my kind of, promotion. you know, yeah, promotion mainly. I see. Have you tried it? No, I'm not really interested in the stuff, to be honest. I don't know. I'd, I'd say I prefer, you know, peace of mind more than just, you know, publicity, let's say, yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> one more question here. Like you shared your tips for writing, like how you have, how students should write and generation of ideas. What about speaking? Like I think both of you got nine for speaking three times. And uh, what would be your like piece of advice for students mostly because uh, they feel kind of frustrated before their exam and they can't they can't like uh, speak as they uh, as as as they usually speak with with their teachers or friends uh, in the exam what do you suggest them to do before their test or so um uh, the thing that personally helped me was preparation um uh, i don't mean by preparation doesn't mean like i learn simple answers yeah i, I might do that but i do it mainly for the idea generation um, and that just improves my confidence yeah like I will be in the exam room with the examiner confident in my skills uh, give me any question I can answer those questions yeah so the thing that prevents many students from performing really well is anxiety yeah um, like they think that examiner is going to you know lower their score exactly what yeah. if they don't get the score they deserve and all the expectations of the family friends and other people and they feel a lot of pressure and this pressure can be eliminated by preparing yeah generate ideas be prepared for common topics yeah? have probably vocabulary to use while answering and you feel much more confident in your exam um, and you need to you know understand one thing you cannot deceive the examiner let's say all the time um, so yes you might for example if you're a band seven speaker examiner is not going to give you an eight yeah like in 99 percent of the time um, so just uh know your capabilities know what you're capable of and probably take the mock test and just be confident in your skills take mock test at your back side. yes <laughs> yeah that's what i want to say <laughs> yeah. so and be confident in your skills and try to improve more um if i mean depends on how much time you left uh you're left with uh, until you take the exam yeah if you have like 10 days or something until your exam there's not much you can do um just you know, do the things that you have done before. That's it. And be prepared. That's going to improve your confidence. And don't try to deceive the examiner by using the words, grammar structures that you don't know how to use. And that's how you're going to get your get the score you deserve. 
Um, so if you have a lot of time, let, let's say half a year before you take your exam, then there are lots of things you can do. Yeah, for example, you can start by uh, con consistently practicing. Yeah, you can practice alone. You can practice with a partner. It doesn't matter. And the best way to be prepared and improve uh, through practice is to record yourself. Um, record it. Listen to it yourself. Uh, just take note of your mistakes and try not to repeat those mistakes next time. And uh, the second thing you can do with your recording is to send send it to someone who you think is better than you are. Uh, and then they're going to highlight the mistakes that you didn't notice and you try to improve on those. But the key is consistency. Yeah, If you do it one day and forget about, about it for the next couple of weeks, you're basically starting from the scratch every time. Um, so I believe 30, 40 minutes of practice is more than enough if you have, let's say, five, six months before your exam. But do it every day. Do it every day. Do it alone. Do, do it with a partner. And then improve on those mistakes. And then you should be good to go. You should be you know, ready to take the exam. What would be your advice for for this, you know, there's application speaking something, speaking topics, application? App speaking app. Yeah. yeah what join my you... marathon. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what would be your advice on it? Because lots of students uh, learn the sample answers there. I mean, learning sample answers by heart can work sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but again, you cannot deceive the examiner. They can know what level student you are by just asking one question. Um, but, you know, working with sample answers is helpful in terms of idea generation. Putting like something in the bag. Y yes, putting something in the bag. Yeah. For example, there are some strange questions. Yeah. For example, there's this topic that I myself found a bit difficult to talk about. Describe a foreigner who speaks your native language well. Mm. I mean, most of us do not even talk to foreigners, <laughs> yeah, let alone finding a foreigner who speaks your language. So uh, most students, when they get something, uh, a topic that they, they're not prepared for, they start to panic. Yeah? So what am I going to do? And then they lose score for fluency. Yeah, They just keep stopping and stopping, stopping. So that's why working with sample answers is better for your idea generation and probably vocabulary. Right. But one thing, yeah, so you said learning them by heart. Yeah, there are probably how many? 200 questions yeah, if your really memory is that good uh, and you're able to learn all those sample answers i mean you shouldn't be worried about taking the test <laughs> i mean you're you're ready for the test yeah okay what would be the advice for students who are like who get the questions that they're unfamiliar with or the, the weird questions during this speaking test for example they're un un unprepared for the question but this question comes up so what um, should they do <laughs> I mean, what can they do? Yeah, like <laughs> there's much they can do. So, I mean, uh, what would you do? Uh, like I mean, f for me, if it's part one, I mean, part one in part one questions no, are I was simpler. Yeah. Part two, maybe part three. Part two, if you get something you're not prepared for, or if the question is too strange, lying is the next, you know, logical course of action, I believe. Uh, but when you lie there are some things uh, there there's a trade off yeah like when you lie you need to think more than when you're telling the truth yeah uh, that's why you ended up you may end up speaking slower but if you're prepared for lying um <laughs> so i mean who's are prepared for lying yeah. <laughs> yes but <laughs> students some students students i see when they lie i know that they're lying but that's that's okay but they speak very very slowly and so because you need you need to, to yes all the ideas. yes all the ideas and it takes some time yeah but when i mean you can practice this however um so i did this actually yeah there's this technique i used mm. I used to, uh, you know, print out the list of questions, especially for part two, yeah, because you need to, you know, keep yeah. talking for longer periods of time compared to part one and part three. So I used to print out the list of topics, 
only the topics, yeah, uh, not the what the bullet points, yeah. You know, describe X, Y, Z. Yeah. So I used to hide those topics with my hand, with with a paper, and I used to open it and I started talking right away without any preparation. Mm -hmm. yeah? And before that, my I needed some time to get generate ideas. And if I couldn't generate ideas, I couldn't speak. So doing this activity just rewired, reprimed my mind probably to nice speak. Activity spontaneously I like. and i learned lying like a lot yeah so uh, <laughs> along the way yeah? so i just you know see the topic at first it's difficult yeah i would speak for like 20 seconds yeah then stop and then i started speaking a little bit more 25 30 seconds 40 seconds and then i noticed something yeah uh it was just at the beginning when i was preparing for the ielts for the first time yeah so when I speak, I notice something. I'm speaking as if my mouth is on autopilot, but I'm just generating ideas right in my mind. Um, I can visualize the you know things that I'm going to say next and after next paragraph, next paragraph. Yeah. So this activity helped me. Yeah. So when you see the topic, start talking about it right away. Um, so it's going to be 15 seconds first and then 20 seconds and then 30 seconds and then your brain will get used to not having any prepar preparation uh, before you speak. Um, so you, you just start thinking while your mouth is still moving. You're saying something. Not just saying things, random things, but then you will learn how to organize things. Link them. Um, yes. I will talk about this first and then I will talk about this and then that and then you have your two minute speech. What know, about speech. this the paper? How do you use it? How do you organize this paper during the part during two the test. preparation? That, um, do you use it? I mean, do nine nine no. use this paper? Do you use it? I guess I do. Yeah, I do. Like I just write down like mainly what I'm talking about. Like it's like um, whatever the topic is. I'm like writing a few uh, words that help me remember what I'm gonna the details. Like it's you know, usually the content rather than the vocabulary because I come up with the words as I speak. I'm not, you know, once you get to a certain level, it's not about, you know, what kinds of words you use. It's the content that's more imp important. What are you talking about? What's the storyline is like? All right, for example, uh, what do you, do you write? Um, so let's, it was, um, I don't know, like let's assume uh, my last exam, describe an adventure you want to go on, something like that. And I was like, I was in Yosemite Park in the US. I said, uh, in the exam, what's the first thing that came to my mind? I was like, no, I want to go to all the n you know, national parks of, of, of the US. And I wrote uh, Yellowstone, I wrote Grand Canyon. And I remembered that I watched a movie back, I guess you guys also watched this movie where the guy gets his uh, you know, legs stuck in a rock and then he, he gets oh, yeah, amputated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I told about that too. I'm adding these kinds of details. I'm just mainly writing the content. You know, it's like what I'm gonna talk about. Why would it be such a cool idea to go to all the, you know, national parks of the US and and then why would I who I would do it with and what's a friend, why why I would do that with him. And then I'll, I'll not so for the like Yosemite Park, like Grand Canyon Park, and I will be like, I would mention that guy's the, the, the flame, and that's that would be it. I wouldn't write, but I guess, um, yeah, bullet points are there for you to, you know, to, to speak, uh, to help you, but they're not a must, you know, you don't have to include the, you know, response to each, um, you know, bullet point. So I'm just speaking, I'm giving a bit of context at the beginning, you know, uh, am I an adventurous person? Do I usually, you know, do that kind of thing? You give it a bit of context, you buy yourself some time, you need to like speak for like 20 seconds because you also don't want to start abruptly, I want to talk about this because you let the exam know who you are, like a bit of, you know, um, background story yeah background story at the beginning and then you you know nicely you know get him into your story you know listen to the story I, I think yeah that's what I do normally just write the things that help me remember what I'm gonna talk about all right yeah. what, what about you how, how do you use this paper I don't use it to be honest <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean uh, I just look at the topic describe something something something and I ignore the bullet points 
All really? of them. Yes. Is it important to use this bullet point? No, they're no. not important. You can they're just. Not. There's no task response in uh, speaking, as far as we know. Um, so I just read the topic. Yeah. So I ignore the bullet points, and I do it because I tried something. When I read the bullet points, that's just it. Yeah. That they limit me to those only to yeah. those ideas. I cannot think of anything outside those four things that I need to talk about. Right. So I started ignoring them. Uh, as long as I say something about the topic, I've noticed that it's completely all right. Um, for example, in my last exam, the topic was describe a car journey you remember well. So I talked about, you know, uh, traveling a little bit. And then I talked about the time when I bought a car. And then in the end, I talked a little bit about uh, the journey, the, the journey that I had with the car that I just bought. Yeah? So that was it basically. Mm. And uh, I can, you know, provide one advice regarding part two, uh, idea generation. Yeah? Again, the same philosophy, if, it's, if it can be called a philosophy. Uh, in order to be a good storyteller, you need to have stories. Um, like, I advise this to students uh, if they are having difficulties coming up with ideas uh, for their part two. Uh, you can use your phone to take note of note of things that are worthy of storytelling. Mm. For example, there's this, I mean, this occasion, yeah, we're talking, we're exchanging ideas and stuff. So I can talk about this thing. Uh, there's a question. Next yeah? speaking test. Yes, next speaking <laughs> test, probably. Hopefully yeah. there won't be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, there's a question. Describe a person with interesting ideas. Yeah, I, I can talk about any one of you guys. Yeah? So I will start with, you know, uh, how we came here, how we ended up here first, and then everything. And so I have an idea. So now then, you know, uh, there are 50 topics, right? All of them are strange, yeah, if you, you know, uh, think about it. So just write it on your phone. Every time something interesting happens to you, just write it on your phone. So you can create a story out of it. Mm. So every day, if you think about it, just things happen. A lot of things happen, but you don't really notice them. Yeah. Uh, but as you start taking notes, you will start to see the story. And so imagine you have like, I don't know, in, in, in like 30 days, you can end up with, I don't know how many, like 100 stories to talk about. Because hundreds, more than 100 things happen to you uh, in a month. Yeah, just take note of those things. It doesn't have to be like something that match, matches your speaking topic. Yeah. Maybe you will get the same topic for the next uh, when the you know topics change, right? So that's important to take note of every interesting uh, thing, happenstance that happened with you. So that's how you gather stories. That's how you collect stories, and then you will use one of those in your exam. Yeah, you have a question. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, I have Sorry a question. Sorry for interruption. Yeah, actually, uh, he, he's now telling like about stories, and we know that your stay uh, in the U.S. Was it helpful to improve your speaking somehow, or and do you always mention that you have been to the <laughs> U.S. <laughs> in your study? That's uh, impossible, yeah, but not to mention. Or, yeah. like, my whole personality is this to summer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, no, I guess like yes, I understand because some of my students are like too like, what if I mention that I wasn't abroad for some time? Will it affect? Will it persuade my examiner yeah. to give me a higher score? If if it's possible, I guess I include it. You know, if the question, like, for example, I didn't intend to, yeah. because that was an actual thing, that that's a kind of adventure I want to go on, that I want to eventually go to Yellowstone, I want to go to Grand Canyon. Uh, but if it's not relevant, like, I don't find a way to somehow <laughs> include the U.S., you know? Um, so, uh, you know, I don't do that. But I think um, your examiner knows if you've been abroad, by the kind of accent you have, probably like you know, someone would think that I 
have been to the U.S. based on my uh, American accent. I also, when it comes to speaking, I see l lots of you know teachers, especially they have this affected accent. They just fake it. You know, they don't actually speak this way. They have this pretentious accent. You know, you know what I mean. Yeah, they just yeah. try to over exaggerate, and then it's I believe annoying to the examiner. Uh, like the world would be such a boring place if everyone was sounding like Joe Biden. You know what I mean? So it's better to have to own your own accent and just speak the way. I I don't know. Like that's how I speak Uzbek. If I change now, I immediately switch to Uzbek. You know, like there is no change. I'm not <laughs> making an accent now. I'm just speaking how I speak Uzbek. I, it, like if you are doing that to my ears, that's annoying. Honestly, if I have a you know speaking interview and I have a candidate, like I'm just like you know not trained examiner. Like yeah, I'm, yeah. and they are just speaking with this weird accent i will be like i will be annoyed like can you be yourself that's what that would be that, that would be my reaction uh but overall did it help uh did it help did staying in the u.s help me improve my speaking i guess it did uh, however short it was i guess it did uh, help me because i do have some friends that i only exchange emails or like you know exchange message on tele telegram uh but overall i think it uh, yeah, it kind of helped probably. I don't know. So you just talk to them and, you know, my interaction with, with them was mainly when I was at the university. Otherwise, you know, I didn't talk much. Uh, but I don't find a way to include somehow some, some invented story about how I was, how was in the U.S. If it's pertinent, if it's yeah. re re relevant, yeah. I, I do mention it, like, like uh, as, it, as it was the case in my last exam. Um, yeah, that's pretty yeah. much it. What about the speaking? You know, there is two minutes uh, limit, so you need to speak within the two minutes. Yes. Do you finish your story within two minutes or you just keep talking and then the examiner stops you or you just stop, you finish your topic before the examiner stops you? I think it's better if the examiner stops you. Like, that's what I think. That's my personal take on it. So, uh, because you need to develop a feel for what two minutes is for you. Like, as you prepare for, can for candidates, the advice is develop a feel for what 10, 20, 25 seconds is. So that that's about the length of your part one answer, like 40, 45 seconds for part three, I believe. Um, for part two, you do many such practices and then you will be like, you will have a feel for what two minutes is for you. Uh, but it's better to get your examiner to stop you than you stopping and your examiner will be like, can you please speak like this? You know, that happened in my last exam. Like, uh, you know, my, I stopped my story because, you know, I ran out of details. I was like, that's, yeah, that's the kind of journey I want to go on. And like, you know, adventure I want to go on. And like, he was like doing this. Okay, can you, yes, another journey I want to do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and like, you just, he also like, because he has to do it, that's what he has to do as a, yeah. as per pro, pro, protocol. And yeah, but, but I think it's better if you get your examiner to stop you. That's why you try to pick up to two length. What about you? Do you also like, keep I mean, talking until the examiner stops you? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Uh, but if I now think about it, I naturally stop you know, when I think that I have done mentioning everything. And that's enough most of the time. Yeah? So in my previous two exams, when I got nine, this is what I did. Yeah? I naturally, you know, stopped the story. And then the examiner just asked the one follow-up question. And then we just moved to the next part. Mm. But sometimes, yeah, that happens if you keep talking and talking and the examiner stops you. Okay, uh, I think we covered all the experience you had. And what are your future plans? Like, uh, you know, uh, I think you stopped like, taking yes, the test. and yes, you, you're I'm not, not taking the test anymore. Uh, <laughs> what about like it, after it expires? Like, uh, even, even no, if, like I know quite a few people who got all four nines. Actually, I know three or four people that are they're not from Uzbekistan. Yeah, I think there are people who are you know still aiming for four nines, but I'll pass it. You know, I have a life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. I I, I believe. I yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's that's <laughs> that's a priority now. Um, but I just want to continue in this test prep business. And I want to take um, like I was asking if uh, you know Edu Action is launching. Uh, Cambridge exams, I want to take yeah. CPE, like, you know, um, I want to also take SAT. I already registered for yeah, two, yeah. two exams, like back to back, November and December. So because if you look at the the scene, like landscape in the SAT, 
you know, market. Yeah, it's I think, growing. Yeah, it's growing, yeah, and also I, growing. I think we, we, I have decent amount of experience in that. I, I just. I didn't pursue it at the time. I don't know why I didn't do it. But what is I, your personal score right now, SAT? The last, at uh, 2020, I got 1410. Uh, yeah, without, you know, being, this time I want to prepare a little bit and actually take the test. I want, uh, my goal is to score perfect score in the English section. I'm not interested in math section mm-hmm. because I want to teach the English section. Oh, um, so your SAT will be only No, no, you, it's not possible, but I don't care what the score will be for math section, you know, with my... Current math, I, I, I guess I do a decent job, but I'm like going to focus on SAT and the, our goal is to include into our you know, education centers uh, curriculum SAT as well. So we want to include SAT. And then if Cambridge exams somehow get popular, we want to focus on those too. Uh, but I'm not sure DTM wants to stop you know, organizing. I, I'm not sure if DTM is the ones that organize no. Sefer. So, yeah, yeah, like uh, uh, local separate, like Uzbek. Ah, uh, yes. Who is the organizer? Who DTM? Who, DTM, yeah, like, yeah. DTM. Then I'm not sure if ever loses its popularity, but it would be better if like we have actual, you know, yeah, um, you know, FCE, CAE, CP would be a lot better than uh, what we have right now. Um, but yeah, overall, we I want to continue, you know, in this in this teaching. business teaching. What about the the CELTA? The soul certification. No, I'm not interested. I, uh, I'm not interested because I want to do this. Uh, I, I think I know I am helping students prepare for IELTS, not teaching them English. Because usually, um, you know, students who end so up... So teaching English and preparing for IELTS are different things. Yes, they are two different kinds of things. So I cannot imagine teaching someone a language from scratch. That's a totally different, a very difficult thing. But I'm usually dealing with students who got all of the upper intermediate level of English or they got six in the, in the exam. In my groups, that's how you end up. So you either have upper intermediate level of English or, or you, you, you, you, got, you got six, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier than teaching someone a completely new language from yeah, scratch. You yeah, need to know exactly. your own language well. Uh, like for that, I, I don't think I'm capable of doing that well. You know, I, I think I'm doing IELTS thing better, so I'm going to focus on. So there are teachers who do a good job of in our education center, you know, teaching general English. That's their strong suit, so to speak. But mine is like, I, I focus on IELTS. And I, I, I think for me to deliver better IELTS, I actually took a course by IDP. There is a teaching IELTS course. There are two courses, one by Cambridge, how to teach IELTS. And I, I recently took the other one. They teach really well. I think Anyone who is aspiring to be an IELTS instructor, they can take these courses as opposed to CELTA. Because as an IELTS instructor, I don't see its relevance. Maybe there is. I, I haven't been in the course. I don't know what they teach. You know, it's a very intensive one-month uh, prep. You know, for teachers. But I don't want to do it. CELTA or T T TESOL, right? TESOL. TESOL. I I don't do it. You know those things. Yeah. All right. What are your plans? I mean, pretty much the same thing. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing my master's uh, in education again, um, probably uh, after, yeah, I haven't decided the university yet. Right. Um, prob- I mean, I'm trying to do my master's just because I have time now and energy. Probably after some years, I wouldn't want to do that, but <laughs> <laughs> just uh, I'm yeah, I will try to improve my teaching and English at the same time. So the next biggest goal is, you know, it is obvious, yeah, I need to get a nine. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. uh, hopefully I will by the time this video is released. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> and then I will just focus on teaching. Uh, that's my job. I'm a teacher by diploma, you know. I, I said I studied at a pedagogical university. So that's what I will focus on. Uh, like I will try to improve my teaching, deliver better lessons, and help as many students as I can. All right, thank you. Did you also has had something to tell? I just interrupted you. No, you no, know. no, that's that's fine. I um, I guess yeah, that's pretty much it. Do you have any questions? I guess no, we, we I think like, yeah, yeah, yeah, pretty much yeah. time, right? Yeah, I think yeah, we covered everything that we'll need for students to really, really cool advices. Yes, I'm like thank yeah. you very much. I've yes, enjoyed cool myself. Tips, yeah, improve yeah. English yeah, and too, prepare yeah. for the test. How to deal with stress during the exam? Like all everything in detail. And thank you very much for coming. Thanks thank you. for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah.